Robert Mbui. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, uh, Professor, Kenya's constitution borrows very heavily from the US one, particularly issues to do with the Bill of Rights. And you swore to uphold this constitution and protect it. Recently, you so saw in the US that a gunman tried to shoot a pres presidential nominee and uh, was actually brought down. But despite that, and even missed, but despite that, uh, the head of uh, Secret Service resigned their post. Now, in Kenya, during your tenure as CS, uh, over 100 Kenyans have been killed, murdered by the police. Um, you know that uh, maybe over 1,000 people have been injured. And uh, property worth uh, billions of shillings has been destroyed. Not to forget that a lot of Kenyans have also been abducted. And as we are talking, there are still people, families that are still looking for their loved ones. Now, um, I s we did see that the, the Inspector General of Police resigned. Do you think that uh, as a CS, you should not also have taken responsibility, political responsibility for that failure that the resignation confirms and also either resigned or uh, declined the, 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 the appointment? It's also important to note that uh, during these demos that were held, um, a lot of uh, people were, 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 were shot. And there is clamor and request and, uh, you know, for, for, for justice. In fact, uh, I've attended, one of them was a constituent, Erickson Muticia, and we've gone to those funerals, and the families are asking for justice. You have forensic evidence because you have the bullets, and you know that every bullet that comes from a gun can be traced. Why have we not seen arrests and uh, you know, arraignment in court of the police officers that are accused or that were involved in these shootings? Because that would appease the public a little bit. Uh, allow me, Mr. Speaker, to also point out that uh, the CS has had, uh, sorry, um, the nominee has had a very illustrious career. And, uh, you know, PhD, you've done consultancy all over. And uh, when you are here for the uh, approval hearings in 2022, after all those many years of, uh, of working, your wealth was at 544 million. Now, two years later, uh, your wealth now is at 694 million. That is a whooping 150 million shillings more. Maybe you could explain to us, is this increase probably related to the office that you hold? It would be important for us to know. And finally, Mr. Speaker. Too, too many issues. questions, Robert. Mr. Speaker, just one last one, because we are, we are, we are doing very well with time, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> that, just la one last one, uh, yes. which is because I'm just uh, picking out some of the things that some of the members have said yes. on the matters of insecurity and criminal gangs, Mr. Speaker that have been out there mugging our people, these burglaries, you know, at the, in, the, in the North Rift, there are all these issues of um, uh, cattle rustling and all that, which you have admitted there are issues. Now, my question is, when you know that we have such insecurity in the country, what was the logic behind making a decision to send a thousand police officers to go and secure Haiti when Kenya has a problem? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Professor. Mr. Speaker, those are three questions. Uh, the first one, um, the Honourable Boy asked about um, whether I should have resigned. The example the member gave up about U.S., where the, president, the candidate for presidency was uh, nearly killed, uh, raises a number of issues. One. He says the person who attempted that was killed. That, that demonstrates use of force, even in our local context, is allowed. Because nobody raised issues with uh, that criminal who was wanted to kill Donald Trump. He was shot dead without questions. Number two, uh, the honorable member has said that the, the director of the Secret Service resigned but also drew a parallel and said our IG also resigned. The minister did not resign in the US. I don't know why the Kenyan minister must resign. <laughs> and nobody asked the minister to resign because ministers don't instruct operations, they instruct policy. I can only resign if my policy instruction is unconstitutional or illegal. Then, uh, on the question of those uh, unfortunate incidents when Kenyans lost their lives and the quest for justice, I strongly believe that there must be justice and 
every death that occurred must be accounted for. However, Mr. Speaker, the process of putting together criminal investigations, including forensic evidence, is not something that can be done, can be rushed. It takes a bit of time all over the world, not just in Kenya. I believe IPOA should help the country to get closure, and I have promised, if I am reappointed, I'll encourage the collaboration and support and goodwill between IPOA and the police in terms of providing information so that justice is served. I have also been asked about my wealth, which has increased from 544 million to 694 million. It is true uh, because, first let me start by saying that I have not benefited from any improper business. I have not done any business with government, let's start from there. I have not applied for any tender by myself, by proxy, by relative, or by anybody. Mr. Speaker, before I was appointed, my wealth was at 544 million. I said at that time, which I still do now, that I have run a business, which today I do not participate in that business. I don't um, practice law, but my law firm is a life and working and much of that revenue has actually come through uh, the revenue from my law firm, which is still active, but being managed by other people. I think all my salary and allowances have been spent um, in paying bills. Therefore, uh, most of uh, um, the increment in my net worth is uh, because of three things. One, the legal fees, some of which was actually pending by the time I was being appointed. And I said it here, that there are some unpaid legal fees, which some of them were paid. In fact, I remember two months after I was uh, appointed, one of the clients paid a significant amount of legal fees, which had been pending. Uh, other than that, I do small businesses and so forth and so on. None of my money has come from the public except the salary and the allowances that I'm entitled to. Lastly, on Haiti, it is true that the government of Kenya through the National Security Council deployed, decided to deploy our officers in Haiti pursuant to a request by the UN Security Council and the UN General Assembly. These are international obligations. It has not affected our operations. And it is not true to say that since there are problems in Kenya, we cannot also do our international obligations because the all countries in the world do have security issues. They have security matters. Even the country you consider safest has its own security matters. And therefore, it is a great honor for our officers who serve in Haiti. So far, they are doing a good job. I believe they will profile Kenya properly. They will bring honor to our country. And that deployment has not affected our operational capabilities, I submit. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Don't uh, be like your neighbor. Ask one question. I'll, I'll ask only one question, <laughs> Mr. Speaker. Uh, Professor Akithure Kindiki, in your first stint as uh, CS Interior, you are associated with uh, strong statements, such as we will crush you, you know, you'll be met with the full force of the law, we will deal with you firmly and deadly, and many other words like that. Statements which seem to fuel police extrajudicial action and um, uh, Kenyans have taken uh, 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 notice of such statements that probably they feel well police uh, extrajudicial action. 
and uh, the use of excessive force because if you tell people we'll crush you, the police will crush you. That's what it will entail.